They called for 911 and the lady said, sorry, we don't service there. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que? Let's do the show. Porque está acá al lado. Let's do the thing. I got to go to that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore, Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to Oh My God Hi podcast. Dude, how, how's it been for, you know what, should we just probably probably thank the people that are, because I think every week the viewership and listenership, I can't, right? I believe so. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. That's a big deal. You know, um, <clears throat> of all the things that I think I've done movies or the show or stand up I think this one here is the one that I think is closer to my real personal self mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that a lot of people think that if you become successful that maybe you drive a nice car maybe you live in a nice house Maybe you have, you know, good, better food, better, you go to better places, you can afford better places, but does all of that keep you from getting fucked over by people that you trust? No. Negative. Yep. You know, you can show somebody the light, but, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, you take a guy and, you know, remove, like, you know, you and I have been friends a long time. Mm. But also when somebody who doesn't have two nickels to fucking rub together thinks they can fuck with you, that's part of, like, a whole nother emotion. You know, when people say, like, oh, you know, do you ever think you'll get remarried? Mm. Or who are you dating? You know, you're, you're you know, I don't know if I've, if I could say I actually dated anyone in the last 11 years, but when you're around somebody who reveals their true self to you, I don't give a fuck if you live in a fucking mansion, if you live in a fucking car. Mm -hmm. When somebody reveals their true self to you, regardless whether you think that your life is gonna be worse without them in it, get rid of that person. Because if you have someone who is untrustworthy, who only tells you what you want to hear, but who has a whole other fucking set of problems that you can't fix, but you won't walk away because it makes you feel good to think that you can fix somebody when in reality you can't. And that person is fucking notoriously just fucking hurtful for the fact of hurting somebody. Walk away. Walk away. Guys, go back. You think you can save somebody? You think somebody's going to change? You know what? I don't think anybody's going to change. Maybe the motherfucker from Memento that couldn't remember where the fuck he was. He had to put fucking <laughs> pictures on his fucking chest to see yeah, yeah. what he ate for breakfast. When someone yeah. shows you their real self, and, I'm, and this isn't like woman bashing or male bashing. It's fucking soul bashing. Because when someone has a bad fucking soul and is trying to get over on you and over on your kindness, but then again, behind your back will do shit because they admired somebody or they're a fan of this or a fan of that under the disguise of, you know, I'll always have love for you. They don't, they don't have love for you. Love isn't fucking and love isn't holding hands and love isn't, you know, fucking selfies. Love is like the shit that you tell somebody that you fucking that you demonstrate not words mm -hmm. it's what you demonstrate somebody can say oh i love you and they're away from you and then they're dipping on the side mm -hmm. like that's it was me but also you know that that's not good man it's mm -hmm. not good for me and it's not good for anybody else mm -hmm. but in relationships and fucking latinos they get married you know they meet somebody fucking twice <laughs> and they're already getting a fucking elks lodge over there in fucking silmar but it's like you know Wait for somebody yeah. better. Wait for somebody that doesn't 
if they reveal yourself and they're a, a better person that you thought, then those are the people that you want, you want around in your life. Not somebody who is just, in a way, passive aggressive mm -hmm. kind of control to just make you think that somebody who don't have two nickels to rub together is a thing that's been missing out of your life. Mm -hmm. But why do you think it's like difficult to, to separate yourself? From I think it's about a little bit of ego. I think your ego gets, you mm -hmm. know, damaged with, you know, it's like, you know, it's the same thing when, when, when you find out somebody's been unfaithful and then you want to know the name or mm -hmm. the count. It doesn't matter how many. Yeah, yeah. What if you told you one? I won't believe you. What if I told you 10? I won't believe you. What if I told you 100? I won't believe you. I remember one time there was a guy that worked at Major League Baseball, <clears throat> handsome looking dude. I'm not going to say his name. Handsome. And he was dipping on his old lady. His old lady was beautiful. And then the old lady got a knock on the door, opened the door, and thought it was like, you know, that they were opening up, you know, like a fucking rib shack, somebody that was a little <laughs> bit overweight. Hey, you know, just want to, we're going to start, you know, boiling pork. Hopefully you, you can sign this petition where you don't have a problem with the smell. This person, like, I don't think when somebody dips on somebody or does whatever, it's about looks. I don't think it's about looks because it's about the way that somebody makes you feel that the other person doesn't make you feel. Right. And a lot of times when you think you have somebody or you have kids or you have a, a, a relationship and then someone wants to dip out, they're not dipping out because things are good. They're dipping out because things maybe are bad mm -hmm. and somebody's looking for some side attention. Mm-hmm. But then it's like a thing where, you know, when guys or girls would see somebody like that and they hurt them and they try to bring them close to you because that's what you're familiar with, do you deserve that? What part of you makes you think that you deserve to have somebody who don't have two nickels to rub together ruin this incredibly well-designed professional lifestyle? What is that inside of you? Does it go back to your mother? Does it go back to your father? Does it go back to maybe something that you saw? You know, I don't think Latinos, you know, are into almost like self-help because they'll overhear somebody and they go, hey, what did the doctor tell you? Oh, he told me that when I was growing up, you know, my mom wasn't around a lot, so then I do this, and that's why I drink a little bit. Yeah, fuck yeah, me too. You know what? I fuck it. Hey, I'm going to put that one down as mine too. So one diagnosis, <laughs> two people. <laughs> Oh, but no two god. people are the same. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, well, but me... also, you have to invest in your in your self to know that you deserve better. Did I already get the hook? Uh, no, 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 not at all. No, no, that that wasn't that at all. Uh, I have a question though. What do you think is uh, going on in their head? The person who may not have two nickels rubbed together. How are they trying to? Is it a uh, uh, you, a premeditated thing to manipulate no, it into staying with them, no, or that's no, just I, the way they are. I, you know what? I, I just think it might be designed from somebody's looks, or it might be designed from somebody's. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, the people who have a elevated sense of themselves are people that it's manufactured to go to pull to pull on people mm -hmm. to go to get over on people. So I mean, it it all kind of probably reverts back to to someone's childhood, mm -hmm. but. Nobody can save someone else with money. And nobody can save someone else with taking them on a trip or buying them something or telling them that there's something better for them unless they believe it. Mm -hmm. So then you can go 10 years down the road and the behavior you saw in the first two years is the behavior you see in 10 years. And if it's not you... It'll be someone else. Mm. And then whenever somebody tells you what they mean to you, and then they're kind of dipping on the side and make you feel bad because you weren't as attentive, that shouldn't be the excuse for somebody dipping. That person's going to dip. They would dip anyways. And this person that I'm talking about has dipped, and it's been the same pattern, but it's like, when do I get off? Instead mm -hmm. of letting that person ride another... Five ten years, right? You want to you want to say like I'm done, and that's it. 
So is that is that how it ends? You go, I'm done. That's it. Or do you? I think it. I think it would probably be the best thing for somebody to finally acknowledge that maybe this is it, or else you're going back into the same trap. Yeah. Would you go back into the same trap? Well, you, you, well, when you talk about it like that, of course you don't want to. But no. sometimes when you're in it, you go because you think that you maybe you think you don't deserve somebody better. Yeah. When you do, you have to remind yourself, mm -hmm. I don't deserve somebody to treat me like this. I don't deserve to feel like this. And I don't deserve for somebody to be thousands of miles away manipulating you like a puppet when they know all the buttons to push. Mm -hmm. Well said. I think. So, leading but, that, but that's the whole thing. But that's the whole thing of relationships is, you know, going, going into a marriage, like guys will know that. I mean, what dude wants to get married? Hey, I, hey! <laughs> Great if point. you show up and you put this ring yeah. on your finger, all your friends will disappear. <laughs> and then you'll have to do yeah. shit you don't want to do. Yeah. And everything you like to do on your own, you won't have to do on your own anymore because you'll have your wife doing it with uh. you. And when she doesn't do it with you, she'll be fucking calling you, asking you where the fuck you are. Wait a minute. <laughs> You mean all I have to do yeah. is walk down this aisle in the church and put a ring on my finger and my fucking whole life changes? Yep. And that's our marriage counseling portion of the show. That's, that's right. outstanding. Listen, man, there's a lot of people out there with the wrong person and they know it and they're going down the road. You only live one time and you can't make time, you can't get it back, and you can't replace good times with bad memories. So it's hard. To, the yeah. hardest thing that you see people do is <clears throat> is to say, you know, this person's not right for me. I mean, it's all in the, that's how therapy's become this whole big thing. Well, in the last ah, 20 years, we've come across tons of guys who are what we would think are with people who just just rule them or just make them miserable. What do you, what do you think... I mean, is it the right answer to... What keeps them there, I should say? What keeps them there? Well, if you're talking about manipulation, like, you know, you might have somebody that, you know, tells some person what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, from from the, which side? The, the guy getting manipulated? or Because, or, like, a lot of times the guy just, like, just, he just doesn't listen, want I had to a guy, I had a I had a guy with me on the road. Married guy. Uh, road manager guy. And... He was living another life on the road that I didn't know about. Mm. Like he had his own issues and his own double life while I was on the road with a dude. I had my own issues and you wow. have your own issues. Yeah. But huh. that guy who you would not expect because mm. he only had one job to do was creating an issue by bringing people that I didn't know about mm -hmm. or getting rooms I didn't know about mm. or hiding someone that I didn't know about. And that's kind of not... What you want to do, you don't want to have somebody that's like the right-hand person to you be living a lie. Or if you say, where were you yesterday? I called you. Oh, you know, I went down to get something. It's a fucking lie. Somebody saying they went to the gym to work out is a fucking lie. Yep. So when someone lies to you, I don't care who they are, they're a liar. Maybe the truth won't be accepted. Maybe if you say to somebody, you know, why didn't you, you know, I, I, I just didn't want to show up you know you get shit but a lie yeah. doesn't make it better a lie continues the lie because yeah. then all of a sudden now you're telling somebody something because you want to not make them upset or appease them or whatever but it's not the truth mm -hmm. somebody should be able to take the truth if you're in a good relationship with somebody because that truth will be almost what's real and the lie will be the shit that like why am I with this person mm -hmm. You're either with a good person or you're with a not a good person. You're either with somebody who cares about you or you're with somebody who is telling you they care about you and then up here on the side, they're running their own game. Yep. At some point, at some point you're not in high school anymore. Like in high yeah. school, that yeah, you walk into school, you see another dude walking your girl to school, and you're just like you're just like, What what am I what am I doing here? But that hurts when you're in eighth grade. Yep. And what about when you're forty eight? You still see that shit. Yeah. Do you think a lot of guys though will uh, not make the move you're saying to make because nobody being will make the move to cut somebody out of their life because they think that they might be able to just get whatever, get some, or there won't be anybody out there else. But do, do, yeah, do you think it's just like I don't know, for lack of a better word, laziness? Or like I don't want to go through all that. 
I mean, if someone if someone continues to to uh, hurt anybody, I don't mm. think that that's that's. But I mean, for a guy to go, hey, I'm done. But haven't you seen guys that are like that? Well, well, we've seen okay, tons okay, of guys. Okay. Uh, what a, you don't have to say names. What about your dude that that drank himself? Yeah, I mean that guy was he uh, drank himself to death. A good friend of mine. And he was brokenhearted because his spouse went out and was all over town and was not having any kind of relationship with, at all. And he was hanging on for dear life. And he did not get every blatant sign she gave to him that she didn't want to be with him. But she let him pay her bills and she let him right. do the whole, take care of the kids when she was out, whatever she was doing. And this guy, this guy killed himself with alcohol. Drank himself to death. Drank himself to death. Broken hearted. Guy of a, died of a broken heart. If closest thing I've ever seen in my life. But and everybody and all his friends knew couldn't get to him. We all said it. We all said it. Everybody said it. Every, every, but but what keeps someone in there is it is it the fact that they just Low well you self said esteem? It. Yeah, maybe maybe so. But some guys it seems like I mean not in that case, but in a lot of lot of it just seems like some guys just don't want to go through all the shit that goes along with breaking okay, well, what, up. What about when somebody you know, succeeds in a in something, whether it's business or uh -huh. whatever. What do they do? They buy expensive things. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk, the motherfucker got a fucking rocket, <laughs> going to fucking Jupiter, mm -hmm. taking fucking people with him. Like, mm -hmm. but all of those bad things that might come out come out. Drug abuse. Mm -hmm. You see it in bands. They start drinking, they start doing heroin, they start doing coke. They're out there, but they think they're celebrating, but they're really not. They're kind of, yeah. Maybe you think you don't deserve your success. So you bring in people that you think you can fix. I'm not a therapist. Uh -huh. I'm not trying to fix anybody. But a sense of power is to find somebody that you consider beneath you and then seeing what their issues are and then helping them with their issues because it makes you feel like you're doing something good for somebody. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it could be you. It could be anybody. Yeah. They've done it before. That's that's a difficult thing, man. It's, and it seems like the longer when we we came across a guy, remember remember uh, he wanted to go to Scotland and and golf, and his whole life dream was that he was retired, had things going his way. And you said, "Why don't you do it?" He's oh, the wife won't have that. And you're like, well, you know, here was a guy that worked his whole life, mm -hmm. loved golf. We played golf with him by chance. Yeah. And we we're talking about when we went to Scotland, went to Ireland, and and it, and I always say to somebody. Hey man, if you love golf, you gotta go because mm. it's just you know you, you love going watching the British Open. Like I remember seeing the British Open in St Andrews. I remember seeing Lee Trevino play. I remember all that stuff. And then you never think that you your feet would be at that first tee mm -hmm. in St Andrews. And then crawling your name out. And then calling way. your name. Yeah. So I just think that people. I think the hardest thing maybe is to say no or to say, you know, I don't think this is going to work out for us. Yeah. And I think you should go your own way because that other person might be like, okay, but they always want to keep the door a bit open because of the manipulation and they know mm -hmm. if they do or say certain things that the manipulation will be back on. Yeah. But I think when you go to get surgery and you have cancer, they don't leave a little bit of it so that they trust that it won't grow because maybe it said, hey, I'm not going to grow. They go in there and they take all of it out. Yeah. And it's the same thing in a relationship. Like, don't leave a little bit of bad mm -hmm. in your relationship. Take the all the bad out. Mm -hmm. and, you, and it might be difficult. It might hurt. Yeah. But you're better off without... You don't think anybody has gotten surgery where they had something removed and they say, you know what, I, I like the way I felt before. <laughs> yeah, right, Can I go exactly. back and put a little bit back in there? <laughs> put half my culo back <laughs> in, even though I know it was, <laughs> I know that it was, uh, you know, atrophied, <laughs> my atrophied culo. Do you think uh, the type of person that you started talking about earlier, the, uh, for lack of a better term, doesn't have two nickels rubbed together, do you think that person, if you were to say, hey, uh, don't don't talk to me anymore. We're done. Do you think they would take that serious, or do you think in the back of their mind they're like, "Yeah, I got this. I'm in there." Um, you know, that's a good question. Uh, I think they 
Well, it depends. You know, do you mm -hmm. do you gravitate back toward them? Yeah. Maybe you let the dust settle, and then a year later you, you send a text message. It's got to be all out or out. Yeah. So you got to be out. You can't be in and out. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, ten years go by, and you're still fucking with the same person that don't have two nickels put together, but they make you feel inferior. Mm -hmm. Mental I by by just their mental game and physically, like going out with other people. Yeah. Somebody that might be known to as a couple and they go with that person you're like wow man that's really blatant do you think that's what it's they blatant use disregard as in like an equalizer do you think because they are at a whatever different situation than you are um but i think that people hurt somebody just to they feel like they maybe be able to keep them that's my because point. I'm, yeah, yeah. you're going to say i'm better than that person and then i'm going to show you yeah but in the meantime there's five or six other people down the road that they... Because I think it, it goes along... I don't know if we're talking too much in code here, but it goes along with like uh, when you're talking with a guy you're working with on, ro on the road and this person where they kind of... They want to raise themselves up to a level that they feel like they are the conquering person in that relationship rather than the person who is being taken care of kind of thing. You know what I mean? It seems like both of them have that same, well, that same ilk of you know that thought... Well, they always try to, well, you know, I mean, you've seen it. We go on the road and you have somebody there. They're like, oh, he doesn't want to take pictures. And it's like, hey, man, yeah. don't, don't, yeah. you don't talk for me. Yeah. I got it. Mm. But they feel, they feel the power even just being close to somebody like that. Yep. Where they go, I don't know. Let me, you know, let me ask them. Meanwhile, they got no business right. in your business. They're it's, just it's there. Speaking for you and you're not there and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you end up spending your one life with somebody who you knew was not good for you. And then you end up servicing them the rest of your life. But when you looked at it on a pro and con scale, you've given everything to them. And they really haven't given you that much. Mm -hmm. It's not even close. But their manipulation makes you feel like you can't be without them. You can. That's the thing. And you get uh, two nickels making you feel like like that's the it's person just, you, just you have to be with. It's just, yeah, it's manipulation. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, here's my here's my uh, <laughs> remember the, my one question. Yeah. What was it? So was it that? You remember, yeah. Are you seeing anyone? You know. <clears throat> <laughs> Is that the timing bad? Is no. Timing no. Good? No. I think that, um, and I think you know, you and I have spent a lot of time together. You know, it's funny that that you would draw people that are deceitful around you. Like you, there was somebody working in our business that I met in the early 90s, a, a guy who I met at a, at a, I was with George Wallace, that's how back, at, like mm. 91. Mm -hmm. And I meet this guy and he says that he's the promoter when in reality, he's the guy working for the promoter. So the first time I talked to this guy, he lied to mm. me. Mm. And then we were from the same hometown, Chicano dude, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, here's a Chicano dude from a hometown, and you might play golf for a little while. You're talking about 91, and then I think his father died. He said, I called him all the time, which I didn't, I didn't remember. Didn't remember that. Mm. And then all of a sudden in 2005, I let the other guy go who's living another life. And my mistake was, and here's a lot of people's mistakes, if you have a, prom a plumbing, if you have a problem with your plumbing in your house, don't hire a motherfucking carpenter who, can, who, can, who says, hey, you know, I can do plumbing. It's like hire a plumber to do the plumbing, pay him and let him go. But I tried to make somebody who had no idea what it was like to be a tour manager my tour manager in the times when we went from theaters to arenas and then you trust that this guy has your best interest but he's been lying to you from the beginning and then you don't you don't see it until 9 years later mm. when that person dies in New York in the hallway of the St. Regis Hotel at 4 o'clock in the morning and then you called me and it's like 4.15, and I'm like, I never answer the yep. phone in the room. And then you said, hey, man, this dude's gone. What mm -hmm. do you mean? 
open the door, you walk by me, you're totally white. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And you're like, he's in the hallway, deceased. And you're like, what? Deceased? We just saw him literally like less than five hours earlier. Mm-hmm. And then he's gone. You open the door, you see him working on him, he's gone. And we close the door, we're like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. Had to make the call to the family, had to make the call to the people in the business. And then everyone is in shock that this person would pass. And that lasted about till Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. About four days, three and days. And then when there. you call you call somebody in his family and they and then I said, Hey, are you gonna be all right? You know, because I know that this dude had these properties and his old lady's like, What are you talking about? He doesn't have any properties. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he does. He told me he did this. No, no, no. And then that person says to you, there's a lot of things you didn't know about this person. And you're like, really? Like what? Like he couldn't tell the truth. And here's a woman who was married to this guy who says, there's a lot of things you don't know. Like he can't be truthful. Uh, But she didn't tell me in 2005. She waits till he dies. And I call to see how they're doing. And he says to me, she says to me, there's a lot of things you don't know. And this guy was a fucking sociopathic criminal stole you know at that in that period I was going through my divorce and you think you have a guy who's a brother but the motherfucking devil with you a mm-hmm. fucking devil on father's day we fly back from a gig private plane I'm living over there in Hollywood he says hey man I'll go over there and watch the U.S. Open with you because the U.S. Open always ends on Father's Day. I said, that's great. He comes over, but instead of really, his purpose was to sit with me. His purpose was to go into my bathroom, which he said, I got to use the bathroom. You're upstairs. You're going to let him use the bathroom by your bedroom. And that motherfucker stole my first Rolex and like three other watches, and he stole money out of my bag, which only he knew what was what. And if anybody saw us, they would think that he and I were, all three of us were brothers. Yeah, and very this much. This guy so. was a fucking criminal sociopath. And everything that he said to us from the time that I met him in 1991 was a fucking lie. 100% a fucking lie. And this isn't just this dude, there's like one out of every 25 people are a sociopath. So if someone is lying to you and they say, you weren't even there. Yeah, I was. And they weren't. Eliminate that person from your life. Nobody should ever have to defend themselves on something that you know is the truth. And they're trying to tell you, you didn't see that. Yeah. That's not what you saw. Rewriting history all the time. This guy was a fucking criminal, man. And everything that Mm -hmm. I thought I lost, he took. I made me think that I was neglectful of my iPods or my Mont Blanc pens or my fucking cash. But in reality, this dude was... Sticking in his pocket the whole time. He was jamming me up the whole time. And he made everybody believe he was a good guy. But in reality, he's a fucking devil. The worst person that I ever had around me. And I would tell him, hey man, if I find out you're stealing from me, it'd break my heart because you know everybody was stealing from me. And if you did it, and he would say, I'm not stealing from you. And my therapist said, did he ever look you in the eye and tell you he wasn't stealing from you? I said, no. He did not, right? He had his, he had his eye on his phone, huh? He had a phone yeah. that he would pretend to look at yeah. just as a deterrent. Like if you say to me, hey, George, what time do you think? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's a, it's, it's a fucking smoke screen. Yeah. Yeah, right. And, and if you ever if you ever uh, confront him, like, hey man, whatever happened with, you'd be looking straight down in it. That was a that was a tell, a complete tell. So we're in Las Vegas, and then we're driving to Las Vegas, and he's sitting next to me, and he's text he's emailing the people in Vegas, saying that I need this room, this room, this room, and ten thousand dollars in cash. And to give that dude a check for $10,000 made out to him because he says, I'm getting a divorce, so you wouldn't want it made out to me. And then you make the check out to him. 
he'll cash it and give me the money. And he cashed it, and I didn't know about it because a sociopath will put themselves in the middle between you and in the answer. So if you say, mm -hmm. that time I had, I went with Kiss to Switzerland, and we, we went to the IWC, <laughs> and I bought that watch, yeah. and I brought it back, and I couldn't find it. And then our the guy who did security said, hey, I found this watch. And that guy said, well, give it to me, I'll give it to him. And he met him in Hollywood and gave it to him, and he never gave it to me. Because he put himself in the middle of everything. Like, you couldn't talk to me directly. He'd be like, you know what, he's busy, man, talk to me. And then he would, he'd base his decisions on that. And after this all happened, we, we got, we studied up on sociopaths, which is a trip. So, and knowing now that, that like you said, one out of every 25 people in your life or a person is a person like that who, who you can't trust at all. But so if somebody said, think if, about your friends. But first of all, man, if somebody's lying to you, if they're purposely falsifying their either their job or their livelihood or their personality, then they gotta go, man. Yeah. They 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 dwell on people who like me, you know, this guy's like, hey, we're from the same hometown, you got problems with the mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. And he 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 stoked that like, like that was where he right. lived. That's where he could get me to where I would feel like I was, you know, like he and I were closer because we're from the same place and the same kind of neglect. Like a kinship. And he kind of yeah, has yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the first fib is like a, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, just a little kind of little looking back at those little lies were the tip of the iceberg because he didn't, he didn't ever tell the truth. Like never tell the truth, which was crazy so, i didn't realize that so that don't ever going. have anybody around you especially if you find out they're telling a lie stay around you because there's a reason that they lie and they're lying to protect themselves from you finding out what's truthful especially when any kind of money's involved because that or even in women like they just want to i'll keep this dude here and i'll tell him what he wants to hear all right, we good? Uh, so anyways, are you seeing anyone? <laughs> Back no. to that. Just doctors. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we were looking you up, man. Fucking great. Do you remember that movie, Turk 182? Um, yeah, yeah. I would oh, think that would mean something. Was, new. was that in the 70s? It was, uh, yeah, that was with... Uh, 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 well, what year was that? Was that before you? Shit. Or? That was during. No, it was way before me. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah it was the a 80s. movie that came out in the eighties, and this guy tagged like some sports stadium way up, you know, and he, he just he became like a fucking hero. Huh? Yeah, it was because when you see names numerous times and so big, it's just hey, it just right gets everybody's attention. It's like it, it, it has it has moves more than art for some reason. Just name repetitively, 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 repetitively. It just becomes engrafted in people's minds and they'll end up liking it or hating it. I know what... Um, well, George's guest today is the most prolific graffiti artist uh, in, in L.A., probably history, I would have to say, at, at least in the 80s and 90s, right? You have... Uh, your canvas has been the Golden uh, Gate Bridge, have been Disneyland, have been countless freeways and overpasses you're in music videos your bands have you on their drum set uh, unbelievable daniel ramos chaka ladies and gentlemen yeah back then my 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 name was really bold and basic and um everybody that did graffiti hip hop style lettering was connect style lettering kind of like cursive and connect yeah. letters mm -hmm. style letters stylish letters but mine was just basic and bold and it had the fattest cap that sprayed on the wall, like, you know. And just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did the, the how did you cap. get the fattest cap? Like, it had to be the paint, right? Yeah, no. Is there a it's paint just, or how the way you put your arm on? Like you, 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 you have to hold it a few few inches back. You know what I mean? And just just go away with it. So it's just your style, not yeah. not the tool you're using. It's just how you the did. Style too. You gotta have style too. You can't yeah. just just yeah. You know. You have style too. You can't just be just. Okay, so growing up, a chicken scratch. You can't grow up, oh, sorry, so growing oh, sorry, up, sorry. as a Chicano kid in Boyle Heights, right? Mm -hmm. 
what do you remember like how far back you had your mom and dad or what do you where did you live what do you remember um i grew up in uh housing projects in aliso village bow heights mm -hmm. and from the 70s and for what i remember it was uh it was deserted by the cops in the ambulance because my mom called for two bodies when i was in diapers mm -hmm. and um they start they, they, they she said go. sorry we did we can't pick up the bodies we'll pick them next morning white van pulled up <laughs> and there was no police investigation yeah. they actually uh, said no they, they said no we'll pick up the bodies the next morning oh kids had to go to school and see these bodies to go to school it was just and when i got shot in my front door because my brother's gang involved they couldn't get him get to him so they shot me in my front door uh, and hit me in my leg um I called for 911 and the lady said, sorry, we don't service there. Oh, yeah. whoa. And how old were you? Um, I was already 21. You're 21 she and you get sorry. shot and they said, sorry, good luck. Service there. But she said, sorry, we don't service there. Oh, they man. left us to exterminate ourselves is what happened. You know? Yeah. They, they, I agree. Um, but my thing was getting out of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like not trying to, I started skating. To, to not try to get, get into gangs, you know, and then um, also uh, I, when I picked up a can and a marker, I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" I was like, "No way!" Oh wow! And just to see my name on the buses riding around, <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. "Whoa!" Just randomly, you know. Were were, were, uh, were dudes tagging at that? Yeah, the people were always tagging, right? There were. It was a high school. Tr it was a junior high high school trend back in late eighties. Early '90s, it rain, it it ruled for about 10, 12 years. Put, high, it's know? a high school trend, and it was it was, the cops had no control of the streets whatsoever. I mean, we were out there by the masses, and yeah. wow. they were outnumbered. They had little guns, and gangs had <laughs> bigger guns. No, no, like, they, 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 they were out there with the nines. Messy, and they, had, like, had, they had these revolvers. They had these handguns, and these guys were like military Choo -choo. issues. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, no, just, yeah. And they weren't using handguns anymore to a point, you know, because the cops wouldn't come. They would let a gun play all day long. Man, so to crazy. get away from the bullets, I went riding on the walls, you know. And and when I first um, started looking at it, was it was it was um, a culture, a hip, part of the hip hop culture. West Coast graffiti is like gang related, hmm. and East Coast is about expressing yourself and who could do it with a better style, who could right. do it better and bigger. And with it came, you know, break dance, rap, you know. Like they would do the trains back east. The trains back east. And different it, colors and stuff. And yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a triplet culture. It's the right. dance, the music, and the, and the, and the graffiti, the graffiti art. Yeah. And now, I mean, you, you now I've, I, I was up in Bakersfield about eight years, and um, I was doing storefronts, a bunch of storefronts, and hmm. for about ten years, I did restaurants, and I got to a point where I can um, paint portraits of people with just freehand, you know, wow. I, I, I up my skills. But the people doesn't know me, know me that I get down that way. They no. all, they would just want to get that 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 ecstatic feeling when they see Chaka, name Chaka, you know. Um, people would tell me when I got caught um, that uh, <laughs> they would get on the car, a car load, and go look for chakas, like Pokemon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And oh, they would really? just go around. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Of course. That out and they would I would do the same thing. Well, I think that, you know, like I'm older than you are, so I remember when I first started to see stories about you in the L.A. Times or even maybe see a graffiti that you did and no one had ever seen you, but then also knowing that the police were after you made you a, like a hero, man. Right? Yeah. It made you a well, hero. Full on. He like you would light. just know that mostly probably done in the middle of the night, we go to the Dodger game and along the five mm -hmm. or up on top, you'll see a Chaka. Yeah. And you're like, shit, man, this dude did this. Last week I was telling you that I was on Western and Santa Monica and I look over there's a some dude like dancing by himself, and I look over, and on the telephone pole is a tag that said that said Chaka. Oh, that's right. So how many people <laughs> while you were doing it though? How many I mean, people knew said, who you were? 
How many people, like, while you were in your heyday, like in the 80s, how many people knew you were Chaka? Um, and did wow. they ever try to rat I mean, you out? Yeah, yeah, well, what yeah. happened was it was a, a, that turn of the century or that breakthrough. It, it got so overwhelming mm -hmm. with graffiti that um, the media made an example out of me. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. And, uh, and 24 hours after getting released out of jail from doing six months, I ran in a courthouse elevator. <laughs> hey, we can read about it. Supposedly, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, allegedly, well then. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so, then. my buddy who I went with, uh, his white, long blonde hair, I like a he was a Hollywood stoner like in the 80s. You yeah, know? okay. And um, it was my writing partner, Sleaze. So and he had the marker. It was not my style. It was just like a cursive. So mm. his name was on top, and then they found the marker on him. And uh, a bunch of DAs showed up. They threw us in the court courtroom. Uh, cops showed up. Everything showed up, and uh, they couldn't pin it on me. So I was, I was going out the double doors of the court. There was a circus of pictures, cameras, microphones oh, Crazy, swarming yeah. at me. Did you do it? Did you do it? Mm -hmm. And they they told me before. I said, "Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing." So my buddies, like, there was this one commercial <laughs> that. Um, uh, uh, football players would say, "We're going to Disneyland." Yeah, yeah, right. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, well, yeah, even yeah. Richard Ramirez used that. We're going to uh, yeah, Disneyland. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I started laughing, and the next day I came out on the newspaper with a smile. So to like the the upright society uh -huh. like down upon it because I was just it was like a slap in the face mm. on the law. Right, yeah, D disrespecting kind of they yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't, it, it was this guy was cracking jokes, so I didn't like mean to like like laugh about like what I did, you know. What uh, I mean? But uh, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it though. That's <laughs> the beautiful part. My yeah. homie did. It. Yeah, yeah, right. It wasn't you? But not it, it's done and over with. You know what I mean? Now I could say that statute of limitations, but no, I'm not snitching. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first realize that that it was getting to where you were getting some attention? Because you're probably tagging, right? You're not. I don't it think came as a swarm. Coming. I didn't. I didn't know. It. Like the when I got caught, the media blew it up like instantly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all over the papers. I was in CNN Europe. I was everywhere. I was yeah. Like, oh yeah. Not crazy. Wow. It, yeah. I, I had uh, relatives from Boston because I was born in Boston, but I came to diapers in East LA. Wow. So. Dude. So. Wow. Um, That's a trip, man. I, yeah. I, I still claim East LA, you know, but. So when you started, Boys. when you started, started, uh, first of all, I'd love to ask how, how old you were, but um, when you started, uh, I'll be when 49, did you get I'll to? I'll be 49 this year. Oh, right on. So when did you actually get to your signature Chaka? Were you just like tagging the tag or doing crazy stuff? Or when did you get to like where, I mean, what we're looking at right now? And what, what did you get to Chaka? And tell everybody where you got your name because oh, that's, it's a great I story. Had, I was like, I started running the streets at very young, young, young age. Um. Uh, six years old. Oh shit! At six years old in the first grade, I will hop the fence from school. Wow! And make my way over the LA River Bridge, into Placito de la Alvera Street, mm -hmm. take leather goods, and go sell them at the projects wow. for a bag of quarters. And there was six an arcade old. in the middle of the projects, right there. And uh, mm -hmm. and well, I had actually like a. A best friend I started following. He's he was a pretty bad kid, so I followed <laughs> him. And he he was he was teaching me the ropes on everything. Like, six as well. He, he was six as well, oh but God. he this guy just knew everything. And his brothers that's crazy. His brothers was involved in gangs, and he gets um, a hold of a joint. <laughs> oh, what looks to be a, a, a rolled up in a zigzags, you know? Okay, a joint. And he thought it was weed, and it turned it didn't turn out to be weed. It was angel dust. Oh. Mint leaves dipped in PCP. Whoa. A six year old did it, did it angel dust. So he he took he took we hit we ditched school and we were behind the bushes and he pulls up the the to his mouth and he, he this is how you do it. He lights it up, and this is how you do it. He takes the toke and then he passes to me and I take another toke. And we pass out and we didn't wake up till like um 
It was nighttime when we woke up. Oh, Both woke up. Shit. Shit. God damn, man. Six baby. years old. That's yeah. unbelievable. Damn, wow. And then later on, he gets a hold of the real, the real marijuana joint, so... And then you were, and then you were dialed in there. Times. Then we, we were still six. So that's a guy who kind of showed you the ropes I, on like on the streets, kind of like tagging yeah. and stuff. No, no. The project life, just the. Mm -hmm. the but you you weren't afraid hustling, at six or like that. You weren't afraid life, of, huh? You weren't afraid of night or you weren't afraid of anything. Uh, wow, I wasn't afraid of death or anything. Well, what happened was maybe, um, at um, um, you could take guy, a, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, um, I, I can't blame things that happen. You know what I mean? It was a dark period, dark period. Something happened, you know, when I was young. Mm -hmm. And my mom came back from the store. Yeah. And, and, uh, my, my brother, he was only five and I was four. And there was like a keychain lock on the door and he locks it. When she comes back in, she was just pissed or running whatever she was going through. And she breaks open the door and she loses control. She blacks out for like two, three hours. And um, there's like blood all over her. She hits with like anything she needs, wire hangers, oh, whatever, and belt buckles. And yeah. Like she lost it and she mm -hmm. woke up out of it, snapped out of it and called my dad. And my dad had to take us this station wagon up to the hospital. And uh, and they missed, my, my brother's juggler ring got missed. Yeah. See, there was punctures yeah, in, in both of us. Blessed, yeah. In necks, right? Yeah. Oh, man. It's just the, the doctor had to call the cops. We went to McLaren Hall for like maybe six weeks. Mm. My mom wanted want us back. I mean, um, I flunked the first grade, all the messing around and yeah. ditching. So uh, Fuck my it. mom throws me in the room. I still go to school, but I can't come out of the room at all. She feeds me in room and everything. But my dad was working as a janitor back then, and he brought books from fifth and sixth grade, all kinds of different subjects. So I started devouring those books. Oh, like, yeah? Yeah, I started wow. loving them, and I would request more books. And So you're reading at a higher level than you actually were? Exactly. Right, right, yeah. And when I got to the second grade, I, they put me up in gifted honored class, honor, honor wow. student. Wow. And I started getting good grades and having vision. That's when I had a vision that um, when I was locked up in my room for one year, I know I would be somebody great. I know I would be somebody great. I just, Man, uh, some, something hit me that I know I'm going to be so great. But the topics that, that hit me the most is just like world cultures, ge geography, um, history. I love history. And do you think that, that lent to your style? Um my style, no. My style is more just expression of myself. It's just mm -hmm. the expression of myself, not too much of. Um, but you know, um, in that time as a young boy, like you're so young, man. Like you don't, we don't really have the emotional capability to understand that maybe anybody loves you because like that, like they're always beating you or putting you in the room and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't think anybody can come out of a situation like that and not have an, a better, unfortunately, a better idea of what's good for them. You know, like you wanted to express yourself and you devoured those books. And, you know, mom had problems, my mom had problems. Mm -hmm. And you almost have... You know, now you, you see a T-shirt that says so-and-so against the world, but it doesn't mean anything. When you're in some fucking room and they put you in there with some books and you can't go out and you there's not even the inner, there's there's nothing. You're just not in there. Then, yeah, not then. And at that point, you have to think that there's something better for me out there. But but do do most people find it? Not really. But... It's always good to hear a story of somebody that really had no options, you know, that when they take you over there, they take your mom away, your dad comes and gets you, and all that shit is just so horrific for a fucking kid to go through. But then you find a way, but it's not even about pain. You just find a way...
to express yourself, to want to do something better mm -hmm. that's not jacking motherfuckers. Out of that pain. Or fucking out of that pain. Out of the out pain. Of, yeah. That's not robbing people or making not, other people pay Yeah, not ganging up. For yeah. the shit that you went through, yeah. you use it as a form of expression. If you mm -hmm. go through all the fucking art of Van Gogh, Van Gogh cut his own fucking ear off. And Da Vinci, they're all fucking... Fucking pildoros of fucking drug addicts that fucking, <laughs> you know, Leonardo da Vinci was fucking carving that shit. It, it, he, yeah. They spent 40 fucking years carving that shit. The statues would fucking talk to him because he'd be so fucking high. But some people have it and some people don't. And some people can, can sustain a fucking brutality and some people can't. And you're never going to be somebody unless... You've paid the dues for someone else. Your mom taking it out on you. My mom taking it out on me and thinking, what the fuck did I do? Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. Yeah. And you're just like, you know what? I'm going to be a famous artist. Fuck this shit, man. Because there is, alternative is no. You go out there, you see the police. They wouldn't even come to your fucking area to collect somebody. Call the police. They Sorry. We don't police that area. They won't pick the up a dead body. Not a dead body. Or a shot person who's just been shot. That's yeah. unbelievable to me. LAPD did it that way. It was came from up up higher, you know. Of LAPD, course, yeah. LAPD is the, the bottom guys. It's, it comes from, it's a hierarchy. But um, they didn't want us to rise up. They don't want Mexican blacks to unite. They don't, they, they, Put us against each other. I believe that to be true. Hispanics yeah. against Hispanics, yeah. Latin, uh, Latin, you know, yeah, black against from, black. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. What did it mean to you, bro, to 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 be tagging? What did it mean to you personally? Um, personally, um, I do it for me, for yeah. myself. It's something that I I I get out of. It's not fame based or see all the hoopla, mm -hmm. all the other. Yeah, yeah. But it's your identity. Identity. Yeah. And when the fame hit, I didn't like it because uh, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't get out the projects. And nobody would come to the projects, of course, back then. But I would try to get out of the projects, and it was just like all these fingers pointing at me, like just too many eyes on me. Just people just so randomly recognize me. Yeah. I would get on the bus. I'll go over here, go over there. It was just everywhere. People were just stopping me. Is uh, I had to lay low, low when it like with that, you know. Um, I was and yeah, I was a hero. I was treated as a hero in, yep. the, in the hood. Um, but yeah, oh, let me let me go back, and rewind a little a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my mom since made up. She she had a personal encounter with God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, so, so me she, and my mom don't talk because a lot of and then, a lot of that. And then she, my mom's in Costa Rica, my dad's in Costa Rica, and before mm -hmm. she left 12 years ago, we cried on each other's shoulders and we both got on our knees and prayed. What did she say to you? And I'm sorry that. Yeah, she was in tears. She was in tears. I said, sorry, I, you know, this and that, and turned out. And she still tells me to this day, you know. And how were you? Said, what, what, what was meant for evil. It's gonna be turned around for good. Some, was, uh, you, can you always get a negative out of a positive out of negative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. And how old were you? How I'm sorry, George. How old oh, were you what? when when this came to pass? When you guys made peace? How um, old were you? She left about twelve years ago to Costa Rica. Okay. And dad bought a house out there, Peter Paul's. So you're in your twenties, um, early thirties. Um, this was uh, like. Early thirties. Okay, really. hey, and and you um, you let it go, bro. You let it. You, uh, you yeah, let it cause if I don't find closure, then that's where you have like, you have trauma, un unresolved trauma or unhealed trauma. It creates a disorder. But through uh, therapy or could be you addiction. Just, you just said it um, to through therapy, no. Um, cause humans can heal, can't heal humans. Um, mm. we don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. There's only one that has the answer, the man upstairs. Well done. So she came to you and she said, I'm sorry. No, he knows it's like stuff. not religious tradition won't save us. That's human institution. With, it's the spiritual connection with God, not the like 
the rules and regulations part of it. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, he comes inside and he just you feel it, you know, you just feel it. That 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 heaviness lift off, right. and and the appeal, you know, that callousness over the heart and just, you know, all that stoniness and hurt that's gone into that heart and just just rips it out and just like uh, you okay. feel so light and so peace mm. so much peace so oh, beautiful let's say that sometimes let, let's look at like let's look at like a let's look at like a dog so a dog gets beat by its owner beat neglected whipped hold with a fucking chain choked hung and that dog you go near him and that dog will fucking rip you apart and if you show the dog kindness and you show the dog love he he will he will turn he'll forgive he'll forgive the things that were done to him and he'll be a loving dog like rescues like they say they know that somebody rescued them because they know where their situation was like i had this dog that i rescued this big kind of like a pit bull kind of like what was he yeah, he's uh, a yeah. pit bull mix. But. And his neighbor, this dude beat the fuck out of this dog. And when they went to rescue him, the dog had a police report because the the neighbors would complain about this guy whipping this fucking dog. And when I got him, his tail was between us. He's a big dog. You'd think this dog, if he wanted to, could fucking attack you and bite you. Who knows what's in his heart? Mm-hmm. But you know what, man? Like, this dog was way more forgiving than I would have been. I haven't <laughs> talked to my mom in forever. I don't know where she is. But I can tell you right now, most likely I will not talk to her for the rest of our lives. And it's and it's awful. And then you see this dog and you leave and he cries. And he is with you and wants to be with you. And my and even my daughter went over there. And my daughter's like, "This dog is fucking amazing. Like you just want her to be loved." And I said, "Well, I, you know, I can't keep this dog here because it's not a big enough place." And I gave him a home. And this dog, man, is in the best place that you could think that this person could be. And it's not me that did it. It's the dog that did it. Like, he wasn't trying to bite everybody that went next to him. He wasn't trying to fucking snarl. You know, if you were looking to get adopted, if that dog would have been like, ah, yeah. some people would be like, hey, man, I can't have this dog anywhere. But even a pet will forgive the mistreatment before a human being does. Like, the shit that was done to me, I'm 60, but the shit that was done to me, I just think it, the fact that they make you feel insignificant, like you don't matter, they tell you, you ain't shit, they ignore you at Christmas, they've been Christmas present, they don't bring you one, nobody goes to your fucking school, nobody goes to your baseball games, nobody gives up, you see all your friends have their parents there, and their birthdays are celebrated, and there you are, with nobody. But unless you find a way to Express yourself from that. I'm not sure what happens there. You're one of these vatos that just riding up, just jacking fools or getting high on the side. Now you, every, I don't give a fuck if you're an artist or a comedian or whatever the fuck you are. We all have a fucking higher purpose in, in inside of us. And a lot everyone of times, does. People, everyone does. People will mm-hmm. and give up. It's up to you. Find it. You can find yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You can find your higher purpose. Like I can't imagine. Like all the dudes that that I'm still friends with, man. And I just felt different than they did, man. I just felt like that. I didn't, not that I felt better. I just felt like of the shit that I had endured, that there was something to that. Like you in the room saying, hey, man, you know, I'm going to be an artist. I never thought I was going to be an artist. I never thought I was going to have people know who I am. But I stuck to my story. Mm -hmm. And my story had significance like you. The story Mm -hmm. is important. Right? Yeah. So many crazy stories. Um. Going back, um, that makes sense to you or not? Because you're no, no, no. I, I that's why your complete. dad one day said, "I'm out." Yeah, right. I think so. At that's some exactly point, you've had enough, yeah, man. Yeah. That's what happens. At some point, it's a, 
That's it. It's enough. I've had yeah. it. Yeah. You got to be true to yourself at some level. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, to me, it was like whatever like happened to me is like to find closure is forgiveness of mm -hmm. self. Forgiveness of self, one, for, um, we could beat ourselves in the head over it like a hammer, you know? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the self condemnation, the guilt, and forgiving others, whatever happened to you. And, and it could be through your parents, it could be through um, somebody killed, someone, your relatives getting killed right in front of you. Or But also, man, like in those days, like all the kids would line up, and all the girls would be on one side, the boys would be on one side. And if you acted out, then you were almost like a bad person. But but when you're artistic, you're gonna fucking act out. You're gonna do shit that's not normal. You're an artist. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do shit that's not normal. But a lot of times, like Cartoon told me one time that when he was like 13, his friends would make fun of him because he could draw, and he didn't want to draw because they would make fun of him. Oh, okay. But that's also another way of, of, you know, there was a guy, listen man, there was a guy that I grew up with that his father was an architect, and I'm not gonna say his name, lived across the street from the elementary school. He had a younger brother, he had a sister, and his father was an architect. And he was the most timid dude. And this, and we're talking about the late 60s, like this dude could draw the Apollo rocket and the lunar module with a pencil, and it looked like an artist, like his father was an architect. But this dude could make it look like it was a schematic of the Apollo mm -hmm. uh, lunar module or the rocket. And he was a, I wouldn't say he was a tough guy. So I run into a cousin of his because I go to the elementary school and the cousin comes over and says, do you remember this person? And I said, yeah, he lived right there as far as architect. Where is he? He kills some dude. Oh. Because he was being bullied and he fucking said, I've had enough and he kills somebody. And he's in prison for the rest of his life. No. And this was the last person that you think Shit. would hurt anybody, but he couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't take the abuse, couldn't take the, the bullying, and he killed somebody. And here's this guy who was a beautiful young kid drawing, mm -hmm. the last person you would think mm -hmm. that'd be put away. But also how come? Because I think everybody thought everything was cool, and you get bullied, and he snapped. Mm-hmm. Could be you, could be me, could be you. Yeah. And this dude just, one decision. I'm sure he's in there every, you know, everybody makes those decisions, man. You're just like, you can't you can't bring it back. Mm -hmm. and the way I I, I want to, um, I'm transitioning to, into the art gallery world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, great. Statue of Limitations, I recently made a comeback like three years ago and <laughs> um i was steaming out and i found later on in in life you know that it's a therapeutic outlet for me mm -hmm. you know city property not not personal. businesses not businesses you know but but there's a transition and what i want not only just to express my art in the art gallery world but uh, giving back to the community. Yeah. Oh, fact, with at-risk youth to speak in juvenile halls as a motivational speaker. Mm. And if I'm uh, pumped them up to try to get them out of that lifestyle or or enlighten them out of out of that lifestyle, not try, but enlighten them yeah. out of that lifestyle. Um, what, what, I can't be. I can't be. I can't be doing. Doing any? No, any, no. Any. You're going. You're done. You've done it. You've done. It. No, I done my mark. I I can't you've try to be, make my mark anymore because eventually, you're not invisible. Everybody no. has their day, and, and if you're doing a crime, you're gonna get. You're gonna get. Popped. You know what? I, I you're think gonna you, get pop. I, th know, I so. think you would be it's disappointed just the in yourself. the name of the game. Eventually, you, I, you go twenty years getting away yeah. with it, you know. But uh, I think you'd be disappointed in yourself if after all this time. You got popped for the shit that you were doing 20 years ago. Because mm -hmm. now you want to go legit art. You want to do legit art. Legit art and also give back to the community. But, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But also, 
if you're tagging, it's almost like you've been stuck in the where you, I mean, you have a presence, you have an identity that it's 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 tricky to go forward because people will be like, hey, well, how did you know? Why did you do? But also, if you stay back in it, you're staying in the past. But wanting to give back to the community and wanting to tell kids or somebody, listen, if you're artistic, you don't have to do what I did. Mm-hmm. Find your own artistic way. Do your thing. Write in a journal. Write. Just paint. Do I, whatever. I um I taught a um a three month curriculum in Bakersfield. Wow, Bakersfield is is um it's one of the armpits of California. It's uh <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of homicides. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of the talented cops, people. The come cops out let them get 20 deep out there and all night, and the cops won't don't break it up. Wow! Uh, in daylight, they're running up to cars and serving dope. Like Man. it's just like like the 80s over there, like stuck, in the 80s. Wow. stuck in the 80s. Wow! Stuck in the 80s over there. Like a good old day, <laughs> like a fucking red light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Some flower. Check out the third flower. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a, ch- a fucking white rose. <laughs> Uh, no, but you know, yeah, right. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, mm-hmm. but also now with, uh, you can change the shape of, of like, kids that they don't have to do all the shit that we did. They don't have to make the mistakes that we made in order to get show themselves or or get themselves. Mm-hmm seen or heard or express themselves mm-hmm. and not in fucking TikTok like my daughter fucking dancing fuck out on me. I mean something important to them uh, right yeah. like your voice was important to you uh-huh. my voice was important to me and then we all end up in the same and we all end up in the same place mm-hmm. right nobody's here by accident like you and I when I when I hit you up and then when you and I started talking I think this is maybe the first time we met in person but I knew what you were doing when you were doing it and I was trying to do my thing back in that time and reading the LA Times and seeing you and seeing the stories of them trying to get you for me you know that's why everybody watched Bonnie and Clyde Al Capone fucking died in 19 fucking what 50s and people still they revere and they write stories about those dudes because they were, they were a little bit dangerous, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. the artist is the person that's unlike everybody else. Yeah, I think you don't fall for the same. Right. What about the bad news bears? The the one dude that could fucking play with about the ride on the motorcycle around, it's fucking bad kid. beating everybody up. It's Kelly. <laughs> so so that that brings me to a question I've been dying to ask you. I mean, you have to have a million what? stories of them like on you almost ready to catch you and you got away i mean for years right i mean um there had been times it was close calls where they should have got you and they didn't kind of thing oh no they let they let a case build up on me they started following me out of my house because <laughs> oh they let you do it so they could get you yeah from work oh so they're just eyeballing you like the whole day so <laughs> you think you're no, getting one blow job you're getting a hundred <laughs> there's no what happened was i was catching <laughs> tags on a notebook and doing bubble letters and stuff like in the notebook and when my teacher seen it <laughs> and, and your teacher he reported me to the school police you gotta be kidding the me school police reported to to uh hollenbeck division in bow heights so your teacher recognized on your notebook that you could be chaka yeah that's crazy yeah. to me and 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 gave he you turned, up. He got what was that about those names, Mr. Puto? I know. That's the worst. <laughs> Mas Puto. <laughs> <laughs> Mas Puto. That's awesome. So um, I got interrogated by both school police and they sent me. And you're a teenager. And I'm a teenager. And the investigator in LAPD uh, already had like this photo album, this thick photo album, a mm-hmm. bunch of pictures. Like, numerous <laughs> pictures. It was like all over. <laughs> but I denied every single one of them. But that sent um, um, an entourage or, or, or just uh, different cars, nice cars, and white people in the projects didn't exist mm-hmm. back then. Right. So they were parked right in front of my house, and as soon as I take off, I would catch the bus, and I would get off the bus somewhere far down, and uh, it was still there. It was still there. Catch the next bus, it was still there. 
But I would lose them. I know I, I didn't lose them. I would go into the freeways and start walking the freeways. Uh, all the way down a couple miles along the freeway. Just and did you feel like fun. you were alone or did you feel like you were just you? Did you feel I lonely or you alone. felt like you were you? I was always alone. Oh, no kidding. When I did it. I you felt really. like you were alone or you felt like you were just with you? Like, I'm all right, by, better by myself. Wow. I, just, I don't know how I had that so much confidence. You know what I mean? Like, I know because... Because it was a drive-by period too. Yeah. I was doing it in the drive-by period. Oh, wow. And this, the cops had no control at all. Right, yeah, we're getting... Just, we, it was free mayhem in the streets. Crazy. So, so I don't know. Like I could have got shot so many times. Oh. Um, also, yeah, you could have got fucked up. A one time, a one time, I'm over times. by. On one time, I'm over by in East LA, like past Indiana, like way deep in East LA, mm -hmm. and um, and there's six guys that come out around the corner, and gang members, and they see me riding on the wall. I say, Chaka, come here. And I recognized the voice from like high school somewhere. He was like, maybe I, my classmate. And um, I didn't run. He goes, don't run. So one panzon, a big belly dude, just comes running and he <laughs> pounces me with his belly. He just goes like this. <laughs> and he lands with his belly on top of me and I'm on the floor. And they're all like, no, get off of him, get off of him. That's Daniel, get off of him. <laughs> That's I know crazy. Him. I, I, Daniel, I know him. So I get off and the one that's talking to me. was like, what should we do? Should we get his cans? Or write a block right here, do a block right here in the uh, wall. So I said, hey, man, I'll get down. I, 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 I got some skills, you know, on the wall. So I started getting down with some gang blocks, you know. Boom, 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 boom. Finished them. And uh, the 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 big belly dude snatches a can out of my hand. He starts writing the wall, and the other guys are like, "Come around the corner, smoke a joint with us, man. It's cool. Me, don't trip, don't be scary." And I came over, and a guy comes from around the block to us and around the house. He goes, "Hey, they caught homeboy. He was writing on the wall, and they're they're taking him to jail." So the one that had me. With his big belly big on the big ground, he, he, he took got busted. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Ponson. Fucking that time. Yeah, they got him, baby. That Ponson. fucking Ponson. He didn't do anything. <laughs> right? He probably yeah, broke one a line. Crazy, and that was a crazy away. night. Oh, Another awesome. night, um, my my boy Sleeves, my writing partner. Mm -hmm. and um, That white boy. And we're in broad daylight. Catching tags out in the west side, like the MacArthur Park area. Um... And uh, it's hella active over there. And we see two, after Sleaze caught, caught a tag, uh, two of them started running towards us from across the street, across the street. And uh, they were armed, both armed. And uh, Sleaze was like, should we run, should we run? I was like, no, don't run, because they'll take aim and shoot. Mm -hmm. Just talk to them, let me handle this. And when they came, like approached us, they had guns pointed at us. And I said, they were like, where are you from? I said, I'm Chaka. I said, nah. And they both looked at each other and the jaws dropped. And I said, let me see you right there on the wall right now. And he, he pointed with his gun towards the wall and I wrote my name. God damn. And uh, they said, nah, hey, man. Oh, it is Chaka. And their whole faces went from monster look to <laughs> to just glowing <laughs> smiles. We man. were just like, talking about that. If if a cop caught you and he found out who you were, they'd be like, ah. Well, some might be I'm fans. Like, yeah, yeah, some, right, might, yeah. some cops might be fans too. Oh, that's awesome. Because they, there's, it's a, you know, it's a culture. It's like it's been around. It's, it's not. It won't be eradicated. Trust. Uh, oh, um, uh, please tell us about Chaka. It's a long live culture. Ch please tell us about now it's global it's like where where Chaka came from um Chaka I was um I was back in the I was already a stoner like long hair <laughs> metal rock and roll oh right on. with Vans and torn Levi's at the knees and jerseys like punk uh, nah yeah but, but this is like late 70s oh so so metal kind of yeah metal, Zeppelin yeah. dude yeah yeah and um I, I had Hair passed down the shoulders with an earring already at six years old. You know, like, damn, bro. Uh, 
I think there was a fucking six year old kid that could fuck Man. both of us up. Hey, oh, oh he would have beat my ass. The like, little six year old oh. kid kicked your ass. The police come to describe him. He's six and a half. No, he's a yeah. fucking he's monster. He's wearing an earring. No. When he bites, got to <laughs> No, not yeah. really because. That's the best part. Not really because in, in, in Land of the Lost, a uh, TV series. Yeah. A Land realistic, of the Lost. A realistic TV yeah. series in the 70s. There was a little fucking changuito. There like, was a cave boy called Chaka. Yeah. In the midst of prehistoric dinosaur land. <laughs> the land of the lost. And these uh, these three humans, uh, his dad and what? A girl <laughs> and a boy? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the the dad, humans, son, and daughter. Dad, yeah. Okay. yeah. They were in, in the chocolate. raft down in the river. Mm -hmm. And they went into a cave <laughs> and went into this portal that landed them in. Remember, they were going like that. And yeah, they went and it's, down. it's all cheesy. Every like, time you watch the same thing every Marshall, fucking Saturday, Will, and Holly. And you're still worried about On that. a routine expedition. <laughs> on the greatest. <laughs> oh, well done. Well no, wait, done, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, I had a tear in my eye. Every time it went down, I was like, somebody <laughs> save him. No, but yeah, uh, awesome. I kind of fitted that character. Damn, I fitted that, that character because I had bushy long hair. And, ah, and right on. With a big forehead and so short. <laughs> and I was friendly to to all the monsters around there. You know what I mean? And I can so say hard. now that I'm not a cold-hearted monster killer. No. You know what I mean? No, you're like, not. Like, I'm not about doing evil. Yeah. Like, it's just not right because it's going to come back to you sevenfold. Uh, and it, it won't be pretty. So it came from Land of the Lost. It's a That's trip, a man. I mean, story. it's funny how, you know, somebody ends up doing what they're doing and becomes iconic of that world, mm -hmm. you know, of tagging and of expression and artist, you know. And it just becomes, uh, it's a global phenomenon. It's not L.A. It's not New York. This is a artistic graffiti has its place around the world mm -hmm. not just in in LA or New York yeah now it's um to the spread of media just like how um like Boulevard Nights and Colors and like it helped spread mm -hmm. the that culture that mm -hmm. it helped it spread more um PBS Came out in 1982 with a documentary called Star Wars, and it was all about the graffiti culture, mm. the the Silby art culture, and um, this vocabulary, this terms, and the styles, and beef, and they went into like it's like 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 a listen, whole man. Bible. It's I call it the graffiti Bible. Oh wow! Well, wow! It's the graffiti Bible it, actually. It's funny because I'm not sure if I'm a fan of Nirvana, of the music. I like the music. I don't. I don't know every song. I don't know every album. I know the kind of situation, but I. I love the. I love stories of people. Like I met Dave Grohl, a couple of times. Good dude. We did the. We did the Grammy announcements with Amy Winehouse, and I'm like, everybody, somebody wake her up. And let her know she won. Uh, and you know, <laughs> then she dies, and everybody's like, fucking puta. Hey, she was alive when I made those jokes. So, <laughs> oh my God. so you know. But Smells Like Team Spirit, the video is an iconic video. It was the band of grunge. Like, if you say Pearl Jam or Soundgarden or Alice in Chains, all great. But do they have a video like Smells Like Team Spirit in the gym with the guy mopping, the girls all dancing? And Dave Grohl saw Chaka on the way from California to Seattle and put it on his bass drum and on the video it says Chaka. It's pretty fucking amazing, dude. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. That a guy like that who interprets his own art to the bass, to the drums, to the guitar would see your name and say, I want this on my on the on my drums, right? Yeah, I was blown away. I was blown away. I was in 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 jail at that time. Um, the inmates. <laughs> I was taking a nap in my bunk. 
and it was like 120 inmates in one dorm. It was uh, maximum security. And they ran and woke me up and like, I, it was going coming on on MTV. Oh, right on. And they woke me up and they they, they, they carried me nearly to, to the TV and said, look. Wow. <laughs> oh, look. that's awesome. All the inmates were like, Right, exactly. Right. You're like the guy. Yeah, you're, you're running the show now. <laughs> you're the man. Uh, you're the man. You're the boss. That's awesome. Like I didn't. I like, but I mean, yeah. Uh, and how do I feel about it? Uh, you know what, man? You, it is what destiny, it is. Destiny is destiny. You, you, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did what you did, and he saw it, and he, and he did what he did. But you know, it's been a name that I've known forever now. It, Arsenio it, Hall um, came out. It's not. It's not in video. Somebody, somebody has an archive, but um, he came out saying, joking about me. Mm. That guy Chaka tags on everything. He tagged in the space shuttle, and they actually show the space shuttle going uh, for the Chaka uh, uh, tag. The Chaka tag on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were looking at the. Uh, they have Matchbox cars and stuff like with Chaka. The on New it York too. Police like, Department car you <laughs> did. And then in Living Color also used uh, oh, right. name in a skit with like there were. Uh, presenting me the honeymooners, yeah. Uh-huh. And the guy comes, the big guy comes in and goes, "Honey, uh, the, the subway's so tagged up." I, I, I sat down and uh, they zoom in on his butt. There's a chalk on his butt. <laughs> he got, he got his ass got tagged. That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, hilarious. so tell us about your solo art show now. Um, so now is that the same kind of art or is, is it a um, departure? The soul, the the art show, pretty much is like. You know, it all the tag rules. Mm-hmm. The tag rules. So, pretty much, I can get down with like illustration and oh, yeah. art and fine art. And, well, it is fine art. Yeah, it is fine art because you can never define art. It can be three ugly strokes, right? And to someone, that is art. Yeah, good point. Wow. So, um, my tag is art. Of course, my style with it. Big just time. tag. Mm-hmm. So the way I would do it is pretty much like catch the tag you know, multiple times with like variation of colors. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel with yourself like these days? Like me, I'm, I turned 60, I'm in TV, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I feel different than I did at 50, at 40, and I'm almost, you know, I think just naturally almost like looking to the end looking to the end of, you know, doing stand-up and to the end of of working as hard and almost a little bit toward, a little bit toward retirement, dude. Like, where do you, where do you, how do you see yourself in the next, you know, let's say 10 years? What do you see yourself doing? Well, I'm still young. Mm-hmm. Um, I have great-grandparents, both of them, on both sides of the family. Yeah. They live to be over 100. Yeah. Wow. Well, great-grandparents. My grandparents lived to be both on both sides of the family to be over a hundred. Um, wow! My dad's pushing on eighty six. So he's a just and a fucking teenager. My mom and my yeah. mom and he's still chopping wood in Costa Rica. He's chopping wow. wood. Wow! He's growing. There's mango trees. He's co- he's bought acres over there. You know, so uh, he's he has all these like vegetation going on. The tomatoes, onions, you name it. Oh, right on. He's doing good. He's, he's, his health is good. I, I trust me. Well, I mean, with all the drugs I've done, thank God I've recovered, but, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, respect draws respect. But in to a certain line, there's boundaries. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not going to just throw yourself away. Because I've done throw myself away over the years. You know, I went to prison um, in Nevada. I went to prison in Nevada. um, They dropped two robberies down to a burglary, a ten burglary, and. Well, listen, man. Whatever, whatever we're all looking for, and whatever, however we do, what we do with ourselves, um, you learn from your mistakes, and along the way, you start to leave some things behind. You start to leave people behind. You start to leave some behavior behind. But, you know, we come in alone and we go out alone. And it's like, what do you learn the closer to the end? 
is probably not to be your own worst enemy, not to fall into the same traps. Mm -hmm. You know, fine for 20, 30 years ago, but you don't want to be at our age and still make mistakes. I don't think you can be an OG and be making mistakes that you should have learned from fucking 20 years ago. It's, it's the shit to not make the mistakes and continue to go forward and do, you know, and do whatever we do that makes people happy, man. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a, excuse me, um, it is a, a kind of a lot on my plate, you know what I mean? Yeah. To be Nikon, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, and, yeah. and keep a role model, a good role model, you know what I mean? Um, You want to leave a legacy, be, legacy behind, you know what I mean, when you die, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're going down to the books, I'm going down to the books. Everybody has... A great calling, calling on our life. Everybody has a great destiny, but you have to discover yourself, find yourself first, uh, find closures within yourself, um, open up to 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 people of greater like great people. Um, surround yourself with great people, with really great people, with good people. You know, people that are for you, not against you. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, you're not chosen to be mediocre. Nobody's chosen to be mediocre. You're chosen to be a history maker. You know, and, and you gotta find that in you. Beautiful. And uh, I have to ask you, how many, in your opinion, because there's a lot of different numbers out there, how many pieces do you have around the world, do you think? Um, What's the furthest place you tagged? New York. <laughs> there we go. New York. There's video of you doing a New York... Yeah. Uh, police department car. Uh, yeah. That then it became a toy <laughs> uh -huh. with a signature on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How great is that? A statute of limitations that was over three years statute ago. Statute of limitations. Yeah. Yeah. Felonies, yeah. Felonies, yeah. Felonies, yeah. technically. Beautiful. Felonies, technically, is three years. Yeah. Statute of limitations. This is well over three years. So, yes, I can admit that. And then I'm trying to get you to come to over that. to the restaurant and tag the restaurant. <laughs> uh, opening, that would be great. On opening day and be on great. May 5th, I'm trying to get them to come down and... On camera, tag the restaurant with full authority. Legally. <laughs> Open yeah. arms. So how many do you think? But yeah, eventually, ultimately, where I want to take the direction I really want to take when I'm older, a lot older, is, you know, I still want to go to school, get teaching credentials, mm -hmm. yeah, and teach kids. You don't want me oh, to great. teach kids oh, that's great. art, but at-risk youth, and the gangs get a hold of them by the time they're 13. Mm -hmm. And these really bad areas. Like, you know what, man? I think that's a wow. good. I think that's a good look for so, you. So night classes would be from like from eight, from eight to twelve. Ages from eight to twelve before the gangs get hold of them, because they're 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 gone by the time. But you know what, man? There's there's very few people like you, like me, mm -hmm. that people can learn from as an example of somebody who looks like them. And I think that's a good thing for you, man. I did. To I did something here in Bakersfield, um, um, back in two thousand. Wow. Two thousand twelve. Um, I I did a curriculum. Of ninety days, the first ninety days is was not spray paint it was on paper, and the were the ones that weren't artistically. They, they believe we're not artistic inclined. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to speak life into them to wake that up and mm -hmm. pull mm -hmm. that treasure out for them to discover it. And it's, you got to feel it's passion. Passion wakes everything up. Right. You know, and you don't have to be artistic inclined, but believe me, if you put heart to it, it's going to come out. And it's just basic shapes from circles, boxes, Doing stars, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I drew a verga on a guy's. Shapes. I drew a verga on a guy's 40th anniversary party. I was still trying to live <laughs> that one down. There, and then they there get won't the be no curriculum down. with that one. <laughs> that is but not one only, not, but they, these are like some like in bad areas. You know what I mean? But um, they also got to clean. They also got to you know how to treat each other and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I but the but not not like not like in as a in the form of a parent. Or, or as a authority figure, but as a friend, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
that's mentorship. It's mentor, a mentor, a real mentor, is it's somebody that doesn't come as a parent or as an authority figure. Right. Right on. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I I am noticing a little pain on your fingers. What what, have, what were you just just working on? Like oh, um, work. Um, oh, uh, wow. or did you get maybe, yeah, you, maybe like, you got all out. maybe you got all hold things on, comedy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, May eighth. It falls on a Saturday, the second Saturday, um, by Will Sheraton Fairfax, by the museum. Yeah. Um, doing a pop up show. Oh fucking a man! Oh, oh right come on, on. that's right. amazing. So um, stay tuned in Instagram. My Instagram is infamous bottom slash chaka. Yep, infamous chaka. Infamous, infamous chaka. chaka. Well, and stay uh, tuned there for date and time. It'll, it'll be on the Saturday, May eighth, from five to eight p.m. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for what a being what a pleasure. Thank you, man. Thanks for that. Daniel Ramos. Chaka. All right. Why did you say that? Because you're married to a Latina. You think you're a little fucking no, salsa, I, I didn't. I didn't. Ramos it. I went Ramos. No, like, Ramos. I, Ramos. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's Dan Ramos. Latina, fuck, Dan man. Ramos. Hey, Chaka. that motherfucker be throwing graffiti and fucking vergas all over town, man. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? With Why not? Fucking Why not? Flying out of it, fucking, yeah, the fucking yeah, the couple of the, of the founding of youth with pedlos. Eh? When you draw those stars <laughs> there, <and> then, <laughs> coming out there like a lucky charms, but those are fucking wessels flying through the air. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, little uh, leprechaun with, with, with big bed thousand. Now you're talking. Fucking bottle of flat. You're eating cereal with a fucking dick in the fucking end of your spoon. They're magically delicious. 